Hey everybody, welcome back. I am Violet Vex. I skate with the Northern Brisbane Rollers in Brisbane, Australia. I have an Instagram Aussie Roller Derby and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about roller derby equipment as I've been around the derby scene for quite a long time since around 2007 and I've had a lot of gear over the years and so I thought it could be useful to share some of the products that I like, some of them that I've found not to be so good and everything in between. So I'm going to launch straight into it and start at the top with our helmets. Now, back when I started Derby, we were pretty much limited to your basic skate park helmet. I find as I am a more petite skater and I'm lower down that I get a lot of benefit out of having a visor on my helmet because we take a lot of hits to the face when we're lower down. So um, my advice to anybody that feels like they are a very low set skater, and I mean, height isn't everything in, in skating a lot of the time, it's got to do with how low you actually sit while you're skating. But I like my S1 visor helmet, and I find that that has stopped me from taking a lot of hits to the nose. I remember a game that I played back in about 2008, 2009, um, and it was so embarrassing. I took such a big hit to the nose and I, I just couldn't see after I took that hit. So this has changed that. I love my visor helmet, but I only really wear it for the big games. I don't bother for a lot of training unless we're doing some really serious training. I have myself had to play around with the pads inside. Um, so even though this is an S1 helmet, I've got a triple eight pad in there because I really like the way it, um, the triple eight pads um, on their helmets, the sweat saver ones, I think they're called. They're like a terry toweling and it's really nice to have that extra bit of absorbency compared to on the front is the standard S1 and it really is just a piece of foam. So um, depending on how sweaty you are, you might want to consider the triple eight helmet because of that nice sweat saving um, fabric that they've got on. Um, moving down, mouth guard. Um, so mouth guards have been difficult over the years. You can always just go to your dentist. A lot of people that have health cover actually have um, mouth guards free in their health cover in Australia. So um, it can be worth getting a, a special one done. I always say that especially to people that have had a lot of dental work it's more worth just sticking with the dentist that's done all your dental work, telling them that you're playing a contact sport and getting their recommendations. But I don't like to have something bulky in my mouth when I'm playing. Um, so I use a brand called Sisu, it's S-I-S-U. And my mouth guard's looking really gammy because it's over a season old at this point. But mine's a really thin one. A lot of um, the skaters in general tend to go for this. I fit the junior size because I am again a, a, a petite person. I also don't like it to go too far back so I'm not thinking about my mouth guard while I'm trying to play but I love this one. I'm not going back on the brand sticking to Sisu mouth guard. Going down from there let's talk about elbows which is a massive gripe for almost every skater because they just don't like to stay up. Um, so for a long time, I have basically just stuck with your standard Protec or Triple Eight type um, elbows. They are a simple design. You literally can slide these ones on. I don't even need to undo the elastic to get these ones on because that is what I'm talking about. The fact that they can slide down so easily and when you're contacting someone and they push against that part of your arm that slides down to your forearm, it's not really safe. Until recently, I managed to get my absolute favorite derby pad brand, which uh, they've discontinued their line of pads that I like. I hope that they bring them back or sort of rework them. I don't know why they've stopped, but Adam. Adam are by far my favorite derby pads. Uh, that they, The ones that they've made are amazing. They do not slide down because they have a beautiful silicon sticky line, both top and bottom. So it's not going anywhere. Um, their sizing range is really good. So this is a small, um, I usually have to buy kids elbow pads. These are kids elbow pads from Protec. Um, so 
atoms do extra small so they even do smaller than this again um, and they I like how they've got a nice soft fabric cover over the hard cap so it's still a hard cap pad which you need to have for derby but the fabric um, is way more comfortable for the other skaters when that's such a high um, con no, I don't want to say contact but it's a zone that comes into contact so often and um, moving on to wrists which is probably one of the more important areas we've got the scabs uh, I think it's called the scabs elite or scabs I might have to look up what it's called or I'll, I'll attach a photo of it but these smith scabs are the most recent purchase I've made for a wrist guard. I love the level of protection. This is the back part of the wrist and it's a sectioned piece so it allows you to move rather than one solid piece and I love that design. The thing I don't like about them is they're very rigid to get on so there's no way to open that out more so you really do just need to be patient and slide that hand in but as much as I was excited about these and love them, I have worn them twice now. And this has come completely undone, the stitching. So I've just emailed the company that I've bought them from. I don't know if it's a fault just with my ones, but I'm not real happy about it. I feel like this pull tab design isn't very good. I actually didn't pull on that tab when I was putting them on, as you'll see, because I just don't feel it's very secure. So I kind of just grab it on the solid neoprene there and use my fingers just here to push it on rather than yank it down but it it broke um on my first training session so that's my bad experience with these scabs wrist guards i was wearing a brand called anui wrist guards and i've currently loaned them <laughs> i've currently loaned them um to uh, my cousin because she's she's going to have a go at, at the derby but um, the Anui brand have a thin metal piece on the back of the brace and I kept on getting bruised knuckles on the last three knuckles on each hand from when I take hits that send me falling back that way um, so I loved the level of protection in the Anui brace but I just felt like the one thing they really need to look at is the back boning because this design is far better for the back boning because it's much softer if that's going to um you know when you fall that's going to dig into your hand but you've got a nice smooth solid edge like this that's going to dig into your hand rather than one thin piece of metal which um i was just getting so many bruises from those are newly wrist guards so i'm going to try and i think it was a city brace too but again i'll just put a picture of which a newly wrist guard it is like i said i don't have it with you to, with me to show you right now because i've loaned it to my cousin um but love it completely would highly recommend especially for people that um aren't jamming so you're not going to take necessarily as many falls because um us jammers seem to cop the brunt of it obviously it's the style of the game um so i would highly recommend the anui wrist guards especially to people that aren't intending on flying around the track um at such high force and flying into the track at such a high force as i tend to um so yeah the the bruised knucks were the only thing i hated so uh anui and Smith Scabs are a couple of really solid brands in the derby scene. I mean, we've always had Protec and Triple Eight, and they are good, but they haven't really done anything new for a while. And when we talk about wrist guards, a lot of them are the old school style that have just that little bent piece under the hand and a solid square piece of plastic. I might put a photo of what I mean, but just standard basic wrist guard. And so I really like these newer, fancier wrist guards that um, have a bit more thought into them in the support because I used to find that the plastic piece would come out or snap on my wrist guards. I would go through a pair every few months of the more basic type. Um, again, because I am a skater that I use speed. And so when I do take a hit um, from somebody, it's usually such a hard impact more into the ground than anything else. Now, sweet defense. 
Moving trying again and again. Triangle. That will not be a fun. There's been a star pass. Lucas now taking the star. And uh, Magnum just slamming on through. That was a beautiful hit. Violet only Violet just Bears, recently. So going back to that Smith's brand, and these are knotted together at the moment, but these are the knee pads I used all of last season. And I highly rate the Sma uh, Smith Scabs Derby knee. They are a great knee pad. They have a replaceable kneecap that is solidly Velcroed on, so you are not having it just bounce off on the track. And we see so many of these um, solid pieces fly across the track during games on a lot of the other brands, um, especially, I mean, if you wash them with other things, I think some stuff can get stuck to you. But the way these are done, I mean, you're taking this off to wash it, so nothing should be getting stuck to this cup here. That's the, the sort of sharp sticky edge. This should be fine to go in the wash just like that. I've never had an issue. My only complaint, um, and it's not really, uh, my complaint about this with regards to hygiene is this piece that's actually in the back here. I like to call it the piece of toast because it's literally a piece of toast. But I didn't know that that was a separate piece when I first got these. So I highly, highly, highly recommend if you get the Scabs Derby knees, after training, take the toast out and peg that on the clothesline in the sun um, to dry really well because my first lot of toast turned into a mold breeding ground, even though I was drying my gear out properly because it's in this pocket, in the dark, dark, moist environment, and it's a sponge. So take that out after training and dry it separately because that, if if you're in Queensland especially, that will get soaked and so will the actual foam inside the pad. Pull it apart and, and dry it out fully. Um, so my gripe with these knee pads, why I'm not wearing them anymore is I had huge bruising from these as well. And the area I was getting the bruising is where the adjustable um, plastic buckles, loops, whatever you want to call them are, and most derby pads, especially the ones with the butterfly opening that you don't have to slide up your leg, they will have these buckles. But again, if you're a person that's taking a lot of hits, I do not recommend this style of pad because I had the worst knee bruise I've ever had in my life. It was like this, it was pitch black, and it was just from a hit where I've landed slightly side on in this pad and that buckle has caused the bruise when it's hit the ground. So I only use these for skate park now because in skate park, I'm more inclined to land straight on my knees rather than in these awkward sideways positions that we can get on the track after taking a big block. The knee pad I've gone to is, again, very sad, but it's that Adam brand that, I don't know why they discontinued these, but um, this was their Adam Elite, Elite 2, I think it was. I've got my Teflon tape on it. That's a requirement where we skate so that we don't scratch up the floor with our plastic cups. We have to have some Teflon tape. I love this knee pad because it is a two-in-one. It is a gasket and it's got memory foam like EVA impact foam on those side zones where we normally get bruising. The same thing, the foam actually is larger than the area of just the plastic cup like these ones. Your foam is only where the plastic cup is so this one's larger so you've got more impact protection and it breathes nicely at the back it's got if you can see it's like um an air air fabric and then we've got yet again that beautiful silicon band top and bottom so it doesn't slip down i also like that i don't have to think too hard with these ones because they wrote left and right on both their elbow <coughs> excuse me both their elbow and then knee pads have left and right. So makes it really um, quick. You don't have to like look at them because a lot of people were putting the scabs ones on the wrong way. This part with the name scabs on it goes to the outside. Um, but I see so often people have that on the inside, which means you are wearing the wrong knee pad on the wrong knee. Um, so again, with these ones, we've got the removable and replaceable that's nice to take off so you can wash them really well and put back on and that should stay, it stays really nicely. Um, I have had one fall where it came down like that 
on an angle, but that was, I realized, because I didn't have the knee pad quite high enough up my leg, which was my, my own fault. It's got a nice um, stay along the back for the strap to run through, so it doesn't um, fall completely off you if you took a hit that pulled your Velcro off. It's not going to flap this long piece. You've still got it through these loops, so I like that design a lot. And in general, it's just so sad that um, they don't make this knee pad. Adam don't make this knee pad anymore, but it looks like a newbie have done something really similar. And my derby wife has just bought some, so I will let everybody know on Instagram what I think of them after I see hers in real life. But they look like they are almost exactly this. They've got the foam in them. I'll just show you a picture. Can't wait to see the new Inui um, knee pads that are like these Adam ones. Uh, so now before I go any further down, let's talk a little bit about bracing. I like this Shock Doctor. It's a, this is a Shock Doctor brand shoulder brace, which I have a dodgy shoulder that doesn't like to stay in. It's this one. So you can put that across. I really like that. That is game safe. I'm not going to hurt anybody with that and it doesn't hurt me. And some of you might notice that I do have extra plumbing there because um, I have gastric issues. Um, and so I wear different types of corsets depending on the level of game we're playing. But this one is just a cheap neoprene piece. And what I do is I put it on like this and it's got to be quite firm to be protective. I zip it up. I roll this bit over so it's not annoying and it's got this piece which is quite firm and these these are really easy to find on the net these things I think they a lot of the time for waist training and sweat um, for people when they exercise so it is really warm but that piece there is what I wear on my waist under my uniform when I'm playing and that way if I take a hit it's less inclined to rip out my um, feeding tube there which it's a lifesaver um, I do often still get a really sore area um i like the my fit footies for uh, skates that rub on the ankle and i use a bont bag for all of my derby gear and it's a really awesome bag because it has room for everything and it's a mess right now but it's got a section that I put all the pads in, a section that fits the helmet. I've got a helmet there. Um, it's the same, it's an S1 visor helmet, but in matte. Um, and then I've got room for all my tools and there's a little hidden zip compartment in here for smaller things. And then my Bont roller skates that I am loving this season. I've recently started on those. I am going to do a skate talk video soon so I can share all about um, the Cinderella story of finding the perfect roller skate for your feet. But for now, I think I've just covered equipment pretty well. There's one more thing I want to add to it, and it's a really important note, is washing your equipment. So after training, especially when we work up a sweat, I like to use a um, like a spray that is antimicrobial. This one's just essential oils, and it's made by... Um, this one's Z's Magic po uh, Potion, so M-A-G-I-C-K Potion, Z-E-E-S, and I bought that um, at Extreme Skates, but I like this one. It's nice to just spritz the gear down when in between washes. Always hang your gear out in the sun after a skate, but don't leave it in the sun permanently so the fabrics don't break down, especially things like that silicon band. And lastly, the biggest washing mistake that everybody seems to be making with their gear is washing it in the wrong thing. So when it comes to washing your gear, I like to say treat it like cloth nappies. Now, a lot of you guys don't know what cloth nappying involves, but you don't use any highly scented products. So even though your gear might seem stinky, you don't go covering that and masking that with scented products. You also don't use fabric softener ever. So try and use the most natural soap you can. I like to use cloth nappy products on my pads because what happens is you wash these with a high scented product and the fats um, that are in that product that are designed to carry that scent, they actually clog up 
the I'm always going to say pores, like the the fabric, they clog it up, and over time your pads get stinkier faster. The more you wash them, the more scent you deposit into this fabric, the more it builds up and the more it holds on to scent. So you'll be washing it more and more and thinking, but they're still stinky. And that's why. So um, washing them in a natural product without additives, without softeners, um, not very much product, so the bare minimum. If it's really stinky, doing the occasional strip wash. So that means um, you can increase the heat. You can even just add a little bit of vinegar um, to that wash to really um, kill any germs. And then pegging them out in the sun for the final step of killing any germs. And I tell you what, I can tell you, um, I've never had a complaint about being a smelly skater. In fact, I actually get told that I smell nice often on the track. So. Highly recommend good pad care, washing your pads. Always check your pads before you go on the track for safety because these things take a massive amount of hits during games and we often don't realize just how worn out they are. I replace a lot of my gear every season because I am very heavy on my gear, but some things can last for absolutely years. Disappointed in the new Scabs wrist brace um, that I got here, so maybe, Maybe think about a different one. I don't know which one I'm going to go for after this just yet. I might try one of the other and newy ones. Thanks for watching my equipment video. Sorry it was a bit long, but thanks for bearing with me and love you all. See you soon. Bye.